Ever wondered why the mighty Romans led by Julius Caesar decided to invade the distant and mysterious land of Britain in 55 BC? Well, let's delve into it. The primary motivation for Caesar was twofold strategic and political. Strategically, Britain was a threat harboring Rome's enemies. Politically, a successful campaign would bolster Caesar's standing back home. Preparation for the invasion was meticulous. Caesar amassed a fleet, gathered intel about the British coastline, and rallied his troops for the crossing of the English Channel. This was no small feat, considering the unpredictable currents and the unfamiliar territory that lay ahead. Upon reaching Britain, the Romans found themselves in a series of skirmishes with the local tribes. The Britons, though less organized, fought fiercely, using their knowledge of the terrain to their advantage. Despite some minor victories, Caesar's first invasion was not the grand success Rome had hoped for, but was it really a failure? Undeterred by the outcome of his first attempt, Caesar launched a second, larger invasion of Britain in 54 BC. But did he fare better this time? This second endeavor saw Caesar come prepared with five legions and 2,000 cavalry, keen on establishing Roman dominance. Key to this campaign was the Battle of the Thames. Here, Caesar's forces clashed with the Britons, led by their charismatic leader Cassivellaunus. Employing a combination of superior tactics and military prowess, the Romans managed to secure a significant victory, pushing the Britons back and paving the way for further advances. Yet, the conquest was incomplete. Caesar found himself negotiating with British tribes rather than bringing them to heel under Roman rule. These negotiations, while securing some alliances, did not equate to the absolute subjugation of Britain that Caesar had envisaged. Caesar's second invasion secured some alliances and victories, but it was far from the complete subjugation of Britain. So, what happened next? After Caesar's invasions, Britain and Rome coexisted in a state of uneasy peace for almost a century. But was this the calm before the storm? The interim years saw significant political changes on both sides of the English Channel. In Rome, the Republic collapsed, leading to the rise of the Roman Empire under the reign of Augustus. This shift in power dynamics substantially increased Rome's military might and territorial ambitions. Meanwhile, in Britain, tribal rivalries continued to fester, weakening the island's defenses and making it an alluring target for external forces. The Britons' lack of unity and their ongoing internal strife made the prospect of a successful invasion more plausible. The stage was set for a new attempt to conquer Britain. This time, it would be Emperor Claudius who would take up the mantle. With a newly formed empire at his back and a divided Britain in his sights, Claudius was poised to rewrite the course of history. In AD 43, Emperor Claudius launched a massive invasion of Britain, but was his approach different from Caesar's? Let's delve into it. Unlike Caesar, Claudius had a well-prepared plan and a large professional army at his disposal. He knew that to conquer Britain, he needed more than just a show of force. He needed a strategic onslaught. This, coupled with his political ambition to outshine his predecessors, fueled his determination. Claudius set out to Britain with an impressive force of 40,000 professional soldiers. This was not a force to be trifled with. It was a full-scale invasion force, complete with auxiliary units and elephants, a sight unseen in Britain before. The sheer size of the force was enough to intimidate and instill fear in the hearts of the Britons. The key battles, such as the Battle of Medway, played a crucial role in the success of the campaign. The Romans, under the leadership of their capable generals, Aulus Plautius and Vespasian, fought with an unmatched ferocity and strategic prowess. The Britons, led by their chieftains Togodumnus and Caraticus, put up a brave resistance, but the Roman military machine was too powerful to be stopped. After a series of fierce battles and sieges, the Romans emerged victorious. The Britons were defeated and their chieftains either killed or captured. Claudius himself traveled to Britain to lead the final assault on Camulodunum, modern-day Colchester, effectively signaling the end of resistance and the beginning of Roman rule in Britain. The success of Claudius's invasion marked the establishment of Roman rule in Britain, which would last for nearly four centuries. This was not just a change in political leadership, it was the beginning of a cultural transformation. The Romanization of Britain brought about changes in architecture, language, law, and lifestyle. Roman cities, villas, roads, and forts sprung up across the landscape. Latin became the language of administration and Roman law became the law of the land. 
With Claudius's successful conquest, the Romanization of Britain began in earnest, forever altering the course of history on this island nation.